Hey, welcome back to the Team King Project, uh, where we work on my baby, my 69 Camaro, and uh, do some other th fun things. Uh, but right now, today, uh, I got a problem with my fuel line from my gas pump, my mechanical OEM gas pump on my 350 engine. Uh, it comes out of the gas pump and goes up with a, with a steel hose, which turns to a rubber hose. As it makes that turn, it's got a kink in it. You can see this kink. I'm going to roll in some video here so you can see the kink. Um, then that hose goes into a filter, into another rubber hose, and then into the fitting on the Elderbrock 1406. Um, what I'm going to do, or actually what I wanted to do, was make it metal all the way, or metal fitting, or hose all the way from that uh, fuel pump to the carburetor connection through a filter, of course. But, uh, in order to do that, I have to buy bending metal and bending apparatus and all that. I don't have it. So what I'm doing the next best thing. I went to Summit Racing and I got um, the proper Hildebrock hose that um, says it's pre-fitted Pro Classic fuel line kit for a small block Chevy. Okay. Now, to do this job, first off, I, will, I need to say that um, this hose has a 3 8 inch regular fitting that goes into the gas pump. Um, but all the other fittings after that are uh, AN6. And um, it's recommended to use AN, actual AN uh, wrenches when you're doing that. I've got an AN6 wrench here. I've got an adjustable AN, uh, AN wrench. It's aluminum. Um, you could use a regular adjustable wrench, but you'd want to put something like black tape on the inside. Um, if you use like a regular adjustable wrench, you'd want to protect, put protection in here to protect those aluminum fittings from being scratched. Now, if you don't care, go ahead and scratch them up, but if you want it to look nice, you'll want to protect those. Now, I've also got, like I said, um, the, this is a Summit uh, fuel filter, uh, from Summit brand from Summit Racing. We're going to put that in line. Now, I don't know about y'all, but you go online, you start researching these things. Hey, what's the best thing to do? And of course, all the warnings are don't use just regular rubber hose like I have on there. You can see um, it's kinked and it's got a bulge in it and it's weak. It needs to be replaced one way or the other. But they also, they, the internet, the experts, and there are some experts out there, I will say they are. Um, they recommend, and I'm not going to say who, but several of them out there recommend putting on, uh, while you're doing this work, putting on a fuel regulator. Now, a fuel regulator is going to limit the amount of fuel that comes from the, the OEM uh, fuel pump and send to the carburetor. It will limit the amount of fuel that goes to the carburetor. This carburetor I have, again, an Elderbrock. Uh, 1406, uh, its specification calls for six and a half pounds or no more than six and a half pounds of pressure. I have no idea how much pressure is coming out of that fuel pump now. I will say it runs okay. It bogs every once in a while, but I think that's a different issue on the tuning of the carburetor. Um, so what I did also from Summit, I got this um, fuel gauge or gauge, if you will. Uh, that goes in line and I don't have it sitting here I'm going to get it I do have it uh, a fitting will go in line here with these parts and then put this fuel gauge in line in the fuel line near the carburetor and then I can tell this is a 0 to 16 or rather 0 to 15 um, fuel gauge, I'll be able to tell then how much fuel is coming from that mechanical pump on my engine to the carburetor. Now, if it's at six and a half, let's call that, probably it's going to be exactly six and a half, and I'm not going to need anything else. Uh, if it's a little less than six and a half, I think it's okay. I think we can get away with like, I don't know, four and a half to five to six and a half, something like that. But if it's over six and a half PSI in that fuel line, then um, it is recommended that that fuel regulator goes in line to reduce that pressure to the carburetor down to uh, six and a half pounds. 
and uh, just so happens I've actually ordered one. If I don't need it, I'm going to send it back to Summit. They got a great return policy. Um, now, to do this job, think about safety. We're going to be working with gasoline. Um, have your fire extinguisher. All right. Have some eye protection. We're going to be using nitrile gloves because we're using we're working with uh, chemical. Uh, have a rag to put under that fuel line hose when when you take that when I take that hose off of the fuel pump, there will be some gasoline leak out of it. Uh, have something to catch that. Um, and I've already mentioned uh, it's a good idea to use the AM wrenches. Uh, the fitting that is currently on there is a 5.8. I already know that. Um, now, also one last thing. I am going to use um, thread sealant on a 3 8 fitting that goes into the pump, right? But that's the only place I'm going to use thread sealant because on the AN fittings, it's not recommended to use anything else. They just, they just, you just, you just tighten them up and they seal. So you don't want to use any Teflon or any uh, thread sealer or locker on those. Those will be fine without it. Okay, I think I've covered everything, so let's get started. By the way, this hose, as advertised, 22 and a half inches with this fitting on it. This fitting actually comes with the hose, all right? That's the one that actually goes into the uh, fuel tank, or the, I'm sorry, the, the uh, fuel pump. Now, on the other end, where it's going to go into the filter, we've got this fitting. You can see that hole in that fitting. Again, these are AN. That is where this gauge will go into there, into that hole, and then our filter into the carburetor. Okay? And I will also use the Permatex thread uh, sealer on that. I don't know if I need to, but it may protect these threads a little bit. These are brass, and of course those are aluminum, so there's no spec that I can see on how tight that should be. I'm, I'm thinking just kind of a little over hand tight. All right, so it has a little bit of gasoline in it. Okay, now here, again, uh, this fuel line coming out of the fuel pump down here is metal goes into this rubber hose there's the kink goes into this filter into this rubber hose and into the fitting here that is an elder brock fitting it goes under the linkage here the electric choke and up and goes in there with what's called a banjo fitting so i'm gonna go ahead and take this clamp loose here and take that rubber hose off. Alright, All right, so I'm going to take this filter off. Okay. line is out. I'm going to pull that up and look at it on camera. Get a better look at that kink. Watch that bend. It really is weak. It was kinked pretty severely right there. If you can see that. So. We're going to replace it. Alright. Let's look at this fuel line real quick. This metal part, this flange here, double reverse flange, whatever they call that, that's what goes into the um, fuel pump. And then it's this metal line, then here's that rubber hose with the kink that I was worried about. It's kink, and of course it's this protrusion, it's very weak. And that's what I was worried about um, breaking on me. The whole reason I'm doing this process. but. I didn't know this before I pulled it off. If you look here, I think I mentioned earlier that I didn't. I, ideally, you'd put metal all the way from the pump to the carburetor, but I didn't have all the 
tools, the proper tools for bending pipe and all that stuff. But it appears whoever the shade tree guy, nothing I'm telling you. Um, no disrespect to shade tree guys, but <laughs> that's what I am. Anyway, uh, they bent this pipe with what looks like a screwdriver. Okay, if you can see, I don't know the light hitting that right. But if you can see, it's like they bent a screwdriver here, and they bent it with a screwdriver here, and here, then here, and here. There's all these indentations of bends from screwdrivers. And again, it's not used on the AN fittings, but on this 3 8 fitting it is. I'm going to go a couple of threads back from the beginning. That should do it. Alright, we run into a snag, gang. <laughs> typical. Very typical of doing this kind of work. Anyway, um, all these old cars. I have no idea who built that fuel pump. I know it's not original, original equipment. It's like an original equipment. Now, the fitting that comes with the Elderbrock hose specifically says, yeah, this is for a small box Chevy. Doesn't fit. So, I need a different fitting. All right, be right back. Okay, where were we? Let's see. Uh, this is the Elderbrock um, hose that um, came from Summit Race, and it came with this fitting on it. 6 a.m. to whatever. This size is it's supposed to go into the, the fuel pump, the OEM fuel pump. In fact, hang on one second. Just so you know. Open the camera fix picks this up. This is the part number 81233 Elderbrock. Pre-fitted Pro Classic fuel line kit. Small block Chevy. With performer series carbs. Hmm, it's exactly what I have, but it don't fit. Did a, I did a little research on the internet, and apparently other people have heard this problem, that this does not fit the OEM mechanical fuel pump for the small black Chevy, so useless to me. So, I went back to Summit, found this fitting. It's an Earl's fitting. Again, it's a 6 AN that'll fit here on the Elderbrock hose. And this is a 5 8 that'll fit into the uh, OEM fuel pump. Now, this came from Summit Racing also. It's an Earl's performance plumbing part. I'm um, hoping you can see that AT949096ERL is the part number. Okay, if you run into this problem, that's the part number. Having said that, be prepared. Uh, according to Summit, I got the last one they had. Um, on the picture online, on Summit Racing, it shows that this fitting has an O-ring right there. But, coming out of the little package, no O-ring. So I ran over to AutoZone and I picked up some Dorman Universal O-rings. Okay, and these are fuel rated O-rings. All right, so be careful with your O-rings. This thing brought down a whole space shuttle one time. Make sure to bring down the Camaro if you don't watch out. I think that one on the space shuttle was much bigger though. But anyway, O-rings. So, again, this fits into 
there. So I'm going to put this into the fuel pump first, and then we'll put the hose on. Then we'll put the get the filter and the gauge. All right. So the fitting is going to the pump. I'm doing this blind. I'm hoping I can. Get this to go in on the first try without fumbling around too much here. There we go. Okay. Gonna thread the fuel line, the new fuel line behind the alternator and reach down. I'm actually reaching blind here down to that fitting on the uh, fuel pump. Get that dude seated in there, right? All right, so that's on there, and I'm gonna grab the fuel, fuel filter that's going in line right there. I'm racing fuel filter. It's uh, aluminum. And this look would have it. It bottoms out where where zeros at the top. But it'll work. There may be an adjustment or a way to turn that dial around, but I don't know what that is off the top of my head. But it's on there. And we're to the part of the show where we can start this thing and see what kind of pressure we got. Well, it's hovering around nine, nine and a half PSI. And uh, what that will cause is too much fuel going into the bowls. And the bowls will cause the fuel to flow out of the carburetor. I have no idea what it was before. We took that, we took that cake toes off. Uh, all those cakes and the metal and the rubber. Uh, but, according to this gauge, it's over nine right now. So, we are going to have to put in a regulator. All right, gang. Um, more to do. Stay tuned. Um, we will film that action. Thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to subscribe. Comment in the comment section and tell me everything I'm doing wrong because you know what? I'm here doing it in the real world and everybody knows that on the internet is where all the experts are. Anyway, thanks for tuning in. See y'all next time. Later.